Good morning. I want to welcome each and every one of you to our online service of this joint uh, worship service of First and Second Presbyterian Church in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Uh, before we get started, I want to go over a few announcements with you. Uh, Children's Sunday School is meeting on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. via GoToMeeting. If your child has not been attending and you need assistance with this, please let Lindsay in the office know. Also, Ladies Bible Study will begin meeting Thursday, April 2nd at 10.30 a.m. via GoToMeeting. Elizabeth Remington will be leading the study. Please contact Lindsay with any questions about how to get set up. Uh, Colton will also be meeting with the youth via GoToMeeting on Sundays at 7 p.m. and on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Please con contact Colton if you have any questions about that. And Sarah Wilson is looking into continuing the children's ministry on Wednesday nights via Zoom. So stay tuned for more information. And if you are following your newsletter uh, during this service that was uh, sent out by Lindsay, the words to all the hymns are going to be at the bottom of the page. Uh, let's prepare our hearts now to worship the true and the living God. Our call to worship comes to us from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you'll turn in your hymnals with me to hymn 75, we're going to be singing, O Father, You are Sovereign. Father, 
We praise you that you are the maker of all things. We praise you that you uphold the world by your power. We call upon you as our Redeemer, and we look to you as the one who will judge heaven and earth. Father, you are holy, you are righteous, you are good. And as we look to you, we think of ourselves, we think of our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. We have not loved our neighbor as ourself. We know your eyes are too pure then to behold evil. And if you should mark our iniquities, who could stand? But we praise you that there is forgiveness with you, that you should be feared. We praise you for the mercy that is in the Lord Jesus Christ to all who call upon his name. And so we gladly confess our sins. We have no plea or hope in ourselves. Our plea is in the Savior who lived a perfect life, who died that cursed death on the cross, who rose gloriously from the dead, that we might be brought from death to life, that our sins might be pardoned and covered, and we might be counted in him, that spotless robe of righteousness placed upon our shoulders as righteous in your sight. So forgive us, we pray, and we gladly rejoice in this provision that you have made in the Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 11. We're going to read the first and all of the seven verses. Um, This is a psalm of refuge by David. And when David was threatened by his enemies, the psalmist put his confidence completely in his God. And we need to see during all the afflictions that he went through that we cannot find salvation in anyone or anything but God himself. No matter what those afflictions are, whether they be the world the flesh, the devil, or even a coronavirus pandemic. And as king of the universe, God is in complete control of all things. Nothing escapes his notice, not even the actions of the wicked, for whom there is a cup of God's wrath that is reserved, that they will drink to the very dregs one day. And that is that cup that is mentioned in verse 6. But praise God, though, that our Savior Jesus Christ, he drank that very cup for his own people, that we would not have to, for those who put their faith and their trust in him. His people, who are called the upright, shall one day behold his face. Let's read from Psalm 11 to the choir master of David. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of man. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him, let the Lord rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright 
shall behold his face. And so ends the reading of God's holy word. And this is the Old Testament lesson. May he bless it to our hearts and to our souls. Let us go to our God now in prayer. Father God, how good it is to know that you are in complete control of all things. Father, that you are in your holy temple. You sit in heaven and you do as you please, Father God. And so we come and we bring our petitions to you, Father God, knowing that you care for us. And Father God, you have said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And so, Father God, as we have confessed our sins already, Father, we pray for healing of our land during the time, this unprecedented time of this coronavirus pandemic, Father. Lord, these are unprecedented times in which we are living, Father. And Lord God, we know that you sit in heaven and you do as you please. And Father, if it is your will, you could stop this virus with a word. And so, Father God, we pray to you. You are our refuge and our hope in all things. And so, Father God, we ask for mercy. We ask for grace. And so, Lord, I pray for our national leaders right now during this time. I pray for President Trump, for Vice President Mike Pence, and for his coronavirus task force, Lord God. I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment during this time, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would be with and protect and keep all of those first responders, all of those doctors, all of those nurses who face the disease head on, Lord God, and especially those who are in these very hot spots across the country, Lord. Uh, places like New York, places like Washington State, places like Louisiana and Michigan and other places like that, Father God, that you would be merciful, that you, Father, with your grace and your mercy would bring this virus to an end. But Father God, we pray that we would cry out to you, for you are the one who holds all things in your hands, even our very lives. And so, Lord, I pray for our, uh, the families of our congregations and the families of this community, Lord. I pray for patience and for grace and for mercy. Lord, for those who are under tremendous stress because of this unique situation in which we find ourselves. Lord, I pray with all of my heart for those who are suffering physically, for those who suffer, Father, financially, for those who suffer emotionally and spiritually, O oh Lord God that you would be near them in a mighty way, that they would look unto you for all things and that they would find their healing in the great physician who alone can not only restore their bodies but their souls as well. Lord God Almighty, I want to pray for specific needs in this congregation as well this morning. I want to pray for Marsha Williams, Lord God, that you would take away her pain and her fever. You would bless the medication that the doctors are giving her. And Lord God, that you would give her your peace as she looks unto you at this time. Pray for Faye Albritton and for Sam Olden as they are homebound right now. Lord, that you would provide for their every need, Lord God, and that they would look unto you for all things. And Lord God, I pray for Sandra Brown as well. Lord God, I pray for the problems that she's been having with her shortness of breath. And that, Lord God, you would give her your mercy and your grace and healing and that she would know your presence, and that underneath are your everlasting arms. And Lord, I especially want to pray for Billy Bridgeforth, Lord. Thank you so much uh, for his leadership in this church, for his love for your people. And Lord, I pray with all of my heart that you would bless the consultation that he has with Mayo's father. I pray that whoever would be doing the surgery for him, Father, that that would be successful to remove all cancer, Father God and that he and Mariah would trust fully in your grace and in your mercy to take care of them at this time. And finally, Lord, I want to pray for some of our missionaries for their safety and their protection, Lord. And this morning, I want to pray for Claire Lees and Donald Cobb in France. Lord God, would you be merciful to them and protect and keep them. Lord God, would you use them even during this time to show the love of Christ 
to all who are around them, Father God. And I pray that even those who know you not would see the grace and the power and the mercy of God displayed in this world and that they would turn from their sins and repent and put their faith and trust in Christ. For all of our missionaries, Lord, protect and keep them and bless their work across this globe. And Lord, even now we pray that as we have to, as families, spend much time together, uh, sometimes we can get testy with one another, Father God. I pray that instead of doing that, Father, and tearing one another down, that we would show the love of Christ to one another in a way that we have never done before, Lord God, that you would fill us with the love of Christ and it would compel us to love our families and all of those around us, Father, in ways that we never thought possible. Lord, we give all of these things to you now in the precious and holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. continue praying. Dear God, our Father, we do thank you for your mercies to us, Lord, and bringing us together as your people, as one body, Lord, in unity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we praise your name for the risen Christ on this Lord's Day as we celebrate the risen Christ each Lord's Day as we come together and reminded that by his resurrection we are justified. And Lord, we praise your name for your word. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to hear your word preached and read. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be able to sing your word even as we sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Oh Lord God, we pray that you would receive our worship as your people, even though it's online, even though it's uh, broken up and, and dispersed, Lord, like it is. I pray, Lord God, that as your people tune in and they they hear, Lord God, and they listen and they sing in their hearts and with their mouths, Lord God, and pray along even with this prayer, O oh God, that you have promised, Lord God, you would be a God to your people. And Lord, you hear us. And we ask that you would hear us now even as we cry, Lord God, for our people, for this country, for our land. I thank you for the lines of our habitation. They've fallen in pleasant places, Lord God. Here in Mississippi, I thank you for our governor. Oh, Lord God, I do pray that you would have mercy on him. Give him wisdom as he seeks to uh, give orders and ordinances that would uh, be for the benefit of the people here, Lord God. I pray that, that the people would obey in the state, Lord God. I do pray also for our mayor and the aldermen of this city in Yazoo City. We thank you for Yazoo City. Lord God, we pray, oh God, that you would draw near to our mayor and aldermen, Lord, and give them wisdom for our county supervisors in Yazoo County, Lord God, and that people here would obey you. I pray that you would protect your people here. Oh God, I pray that you would sanctify this pandemic to the hearts and lives of your people. As we just prayed, Lord God, that as we're all together often, more often than normal, in houses and homes and as husbands and wives and children all interact more, even more often than they normally do, Lord God, I pray that we would be peaceful, Lord God, that we would exhibit the, uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, that you would give us the grace to take up our crosses and follow you to deny ourselves and our own appetites and desires, Lord God, that you would give us bridal tongues and self-control, Lord God, that we could exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, Lord God, faithfulness, gentleness, God, that you would give us the fruit of the Spirit. And you've told us that if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how will you not be able to give us the Holy Spirit, Lord God? We ask for the Holy Spirit, particularly even as we come to worship you. And Lord God, we pray also for the particular needs of people in our congregations, Lord God. I thank you for Molly and Andrew and their wedding. Oh God, I pray that you would bless their marriage. I know that the day was uh, not what they wanted, but Lord God, I do pray that you would bless them with a godly marriage, Lord God, and you'd have mercy on this new covenant household as they uh, begin a new life together. Oh, Lord God, I do also pray uh, with thanksgiving. Lord God, you've told us to bring our supplications with thanksgiving. Lord, for moving Mr. Charlie Jordan from ICU into a room where his family can visit him, and we also thank you, Lord God, that his coronavirus test was negative. Oh, Lord God, we praise your name for your mercies to them. I pray that you would bring Mr. Jordan home. Lord God, bless Kathy and Margaret and the, their siblings as they tend to him, Lord God, that you would have mercy on that family, I pray. Lord, I also, Lord God, 
uh, pray for our uh, upcoming wedding of Michael McPhail and Madeline Waller, Lord God. I do ask you to have mercy on them. Lord, I pray that you would have mercy on our widows. Lord, we think of Miss Nora Ganey and think of uh, Mary Ellen or Galloway. God, have, have mercy on these ladies whom you've promised to be a husband to. As a time when we're isolating, Lord God, people who live by themselves already, pray for Diane Moody as well with Nora. Lord God, that you would protect them, that you would comfort them, that you would bless them with, with sweet interaction and fellowship with your people, Lord God, whether it be by the phone or however mean, whatever means you can uh, reach out to touch them, Lord God. Give us the grace as shepherds of your people to tend the flock, to feed the sheep, Lord God. And I do pray that you would feed us now as we, we come with like little birds with our mouths open, oh Lord God, as we are about to attend to the word preached. Oh God, feed us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We will sing now Psalm 11b, Psalm 11b. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 30 through 46. For a lesson in God's sovereignty, we go to Gethsemane. At Gethsemane, we stand on the Mount Everest of biblical faith. The Son prays to the Father, your will be done. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask that you will take the words that we hear with our outward ear and engraft them to our inward hearts that our lives may bring forth fruit to the praise of Jesus' name. For we come to you in the all-prevailing name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear God's word. And when Jesus and his disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. 
For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with him to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See the hours at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. Here ends the scripture lesson, and this is the word of God. A lesson this morning on God's sovereignty from the Garden of Gethsemane. And this morning, I want you to see the Father's will, Christ's will, and your will. First, the primacy of the Father's will. This is what comes first, the Father's will, not our comfort, not our security, not even our personal safety. What comes first is the Father's will. Jesus and his disciples left the upper room and went to Gethsemane, and there, as Jesus often did, he took his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, further further into the garden. And in verse 39, we're told, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And his father answers, No, I will not let this cup pass from you the primacy of the Father's will. Jesus clings to his Father in prayer. Look at verse 42. We're told for a second time he went away and prayed. Listen as he prays to his trust in his Father's will. My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. He won't stop clinging. He won't stop trusting. He won't stop praying. And we're told that after another trip to the three, he came for a third time uh, 
into the interior of the garden, and he prayed the same words again. He prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. The primacy of the father's will. It is the father's will that his son drink from the cup. Now I want to ask you what many have asked. What does Jesus see when he looks into that cup? What does he see that so fills his soul with sorrow? Well, he does not see his physical suffering. One of the early critics of the Christian church, a gentleman named Celsus, he scoffed at Jesus' pleadings as unworthy of deity. But when Jesus looks into that cup, he does not see his physical pain on the cross. He does not shrink back from physical suffering. What does Jesus see when he looks into that cup? He doesn't see shame. You know, the cross today, we wear it as a revered symbol, but one writer is quite correct in in saying that no one would have thought to have done that in the first century. It would have been like wearing an, an emblem of an electric chair around your neck. It's something you would have never worn in polite society. Not then. So shameful was the cross that Rome did not permit its own citizens to be crucified. Jews knew to hang on the cross was a sign of God's curse. Yes, shame belongs to the cross. Jesus despised that shame. But when he looked into the cup, it was not the shame of the cross that he saw. What did Jesus see when he looked into the cross? Or when he looked into that cup? He did not see human hatred. The psalmist wrote of Jesus, reproaches have broken my heart. They hated me without cause. All around the cross, we see heart-wrenching hatred. But when Jesus looked into the cup, he did not see the hatred of sinners. What did Jesus see when he looked into the cup? When he peered into it, he did not see betrayal. He would be betrayed by the closest of his friends. I can't read this passage of scripture without thinking of Shakespeare's lines. Sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. I ask again, what did Jesus see when he peered into the cup? Well, in the Old Testament, this cup was the cup of God's wrath against sin. That's why we read and then sang Psalm 11, where we are told that this cup is a cup of fire and of sulfur and of scorching wind. It is God's will that his son drink from that cup. The wrath of God against sin that was due to us because of our foul deeds Jesus Christ took that wrath upon himself, willingly and lovingly. It was the Father's will to bruise him and to bring through his death many sons to glory. It's the very heart of the gospel. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It was the Father's will that Jesus drink this cup, that he drink all of it for your salvation and for mine. The primacy of the Father's will. That's what always comes first. Your will be done. 
not your comfort, not your financial security, not even your personal safety. This is what must come first, the will of God. It saddens me when I hear Christian parents say that what I want most for my children is for them to be healthy and happy. If that's the highest good that, that Christian parents want for their children, then they want nothing higher than what the world wants for their children. You have to be able to say to your children, I'm praying for your protection. I'm praying for your safety. But what matters to me more than your protection and safety is that you walk holy before the Lord, that you walk in righteousness, that you close with Christ and receive him as your savior, and that you follow him whatever the cost may be. You see, my precious son, my dear daughter, what matters to me the most is that you do the Father's will. And in this lesson on sovereignty, we see the primacy of the Father's will. But next, in Gethsemane, we see the submission of the Savior's will. As, his, as he submits, there's heartbreaking sorrow Look with me at verse 37. When Jesus arrives at the garden, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. One translator puts it like this. My heart is ready to break with grief. As grieving Jesus says to Peter and John, remain here and watch with me. In these words, Jesus' full humanity is on display. His heart aches for his closest friends to stand and watch and pray with him. The heart-rending sorrow as he submits. As he submits, there's his determination. Don't miss the repetition. Three times, your will be done, your will be done, your will be done. The determination of the Savior. It's on full display here in the garden. See the submission of the Savior's will? He's submitting in heart-rending sorrow. He submits with determination. And he submits in lonely isolation. Look with me at verse 45. Then he came to him, or then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later. See the hours at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Jesus alone, he alone must go to the place of crucifixion and there offer himself up as a sacrifice for, his, for our sins. The loneliness of Jesus' walk. The isolation. Can't you feel it as you read this passage from the garden? There's much in this passage to teach us about prayer and God's sovereignty. Have you ever said, I won't make a decision unless I have inner peace? Will you think about that in the light of what we've just read? The anguish and sorrow of soul our Savior displayed. Have you ever said, I won't take any action that might leave me unsettled? All of this is wrong. Prayer is a struggle. A decision confronts us. We study the scriptures. We seek the counsel of godly people. 
we pray over the decision and God's will becomes clear to us and we're frightened about the place where he has chosen to send us. We look at that place where we know that it is his will we should go and we're full of sorrow. But we submit and we pray, Father, your will be done. See the submission of the Savior's will. This morning we're looking at the Garden of Gethsemane and our Savior's prayers there. Now I want us, after we've seen the primacy of the Father's will and the submission of the Savior's will, I want us to see the instability of our will. You are at risk of falling, falling spiritually. After my stroke when I was in the hospital, on my hospital door was the sign, fall risk. I wish we all had a sign in front of us that, remind us, that reminds us that spiritually we're all at risk to fall. How can you fall? Well, you can be scandalized by Jesus. Let's leave the garden for a moment and go back to verse 30. We're told there that when Jesus and his disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to be the went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, "You will all fall away. You will all be scandalized because of this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But then Jesus reassures. We love our Savior. He speaks the hard truth, and then he reassures and comforts. Look at verse 32. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Have you been embarrassed about being a disciple of Jesus? Have you maintained a craven silence in the face of opposition to him? Well, there's good news here. There's good news that Jesus is ascended into heaven and he receives and welcomes repentant believers who return to him. Have you, been scandal, have you been scandalized by Jesus, embarrassed by his name? Then with broken heart, go to him, confess your sin, and know that in his sacrifice on the cross, he has made full provision for your forgiveness. There is comfort here for those of us who have been scandalized by Jesus. How can you fall? Well, you can become proud. Look at verse 33. Jesus has said that, that they will all fall away. And Peter begs to differ. He says, verse 33, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. And with love in his heart, Jesus says to him, Truly, I tell you this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. But Peter wouldn't stop. Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples joined with him in saying that they would not fall. Have you ever seen a professing Christian sin terribly? awful and scandalous sin. Have you seen that? Have you ever said to yourself, I could never do that? Well, you need to beware. You're on dangerous ground. Watch out, because when we think we're strong, we're proud, and that can become 
the very moment of our fall. You can become proud. How can you fall? You can also grow weary. Look with me at verse 40. And Jesus came to Peter, James, and John uh, there in the garden and found them sleeping. And he says to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter in to temptation. Jesus understands their weakness. He goes on to say, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It is when we're tired, worn out, our energy depleted, that we are at risk of giving up and not watching and praying. And perhaps it's a good time to add here that we do need rest. We put ourselves at risk when we don't rest. Psalm 121.4 says, He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Our willingness to lie down and sleep testifies to our trust in God's sovereignty. While we rest, God never rests. He's at work for our good. And if God be for us, who can be against us? But as unstable as you and I may be, by grace we can stand. And we will stand if, verse 41, we watch and pray that we may not enter into temptation. To his disciples in the garden, you haven't watched. You haven't prayed. You're entering into a temptation where you will fall. Now you can count on this, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Times of testing will come. Some of these we can avoid by prudent, wise, and godly decisions. We never want to place ourselves in a place of spiritual danger if we can at all avoid it. But there are other trials that we must face. They cannot be avoided. And here's how we enter into temptation. When we, like the disciples, don't continue to watch and to pray. When we give up watching and praying, we enter into temptation where we will fall. But here's good news. You can stand firm in times of testing. If you are alert to danger and praying for God's aid to stand, take to heart the Savior's words, watch and pray. Watch yourself and pray. I read these words of Sinclair Ferguson's. It's a prayer maybe we should use more than once in a day. I offer my eyes to Christ. I offer my ears to Christ. I offer my feet to Christ. I offer my mouth to Christ. I present present myself to him deliberately, consciously, sacrificially, I present myself to him. Father God and my precious Savior, your will be done. Because Jesus prayed, your will be done, you're saved. He went to the cross to fully satisfy God's just judgment against sin for you. You are saved because the Savior prayed, your will be done. And because Jesus prayed, your will be done. You have a pattern to follow. Watching and praying 
And whenever times of difficulty come, your will be done. Brothers and sisters, watch and pray. Let us go to our God in prayer. Father, we are prone to wander, prone to fall, prone to leave you, the God we love. So we ask that now as we pray that you'll draw close to us so that we might be strengthened in the times of testing and emerge through them victorious, not in our own strength, but in the strength of Jesus, the one who loved us and gave himself for us the one who was crucified for our sins, but raised for our justification and is now at your right hand interceding for us. For the sake of his all-prevailing name, hear our prayers and answer them. Amen. Let's respond to the word of God by singing hymn 575, Soldiers of Christ Arise, hymn 575. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.